two years ago in Madison Square Garden, the um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, was throwing a, a 25th year uh, celebratory bash, and we were um, honored to be invited. And they actually um, asked us if we would host a, a segment or a part or whatever they called it. And um, so we represented, I guess, the left field artists, the, the slight outsiders, and um, our job was to find other artists to um, you play with and, 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 and collaborate with that were kind of up our straza, as they say. Um, so obviously on, on top of, of that list uh, would be, to me, a very obvious choice uh, would be Lou Reed. Um, who I think is kind of a solo version of, of Metallica. He's always done his own thing. He's uh, for decades uh, continued to reinvent himself and to challenge not only himself but his fans. And we've always seen a lot of Metallica in, in Lou Reed and, and, and we just felt that that was the most obvious place to start. So we asked Lou if he would come and, and play with us and he said yes. And um, we had a couple three great days in New York between rehearsals and sound checks and playing to um, all of Lou's uh, best friends in New York at Madison Square Garden. Um, and it was such a, um, it just felt so natural and so effortless and, and contrary to what a lot of people are sort of saying around, you know, this is such an odd collaboration. To us, it just felt completely, I couldn't think of anybody like more you know, like uh, obvious for us to collaborate with. And so the original idea was uh, that we would uh, uh, revisit. Uh, some of Lou's um, sort of uh, lost jewels of songs that Lou felt that that he would want to um, maybe get a, a second a second spin, and we could you know do whatever it is we do to some of those songs. And that idea hung in the air for a couple of months, and a week or two before that was going to kick off uh, in April, um, Lou called up and, and and said, "Listen, I got this other idea. Are you game?" And that's when the whole uh, Lulu and the Robert Wilson uh, produced play entered into our lives, and uh, we've been forever uh, touched and changed by, by that. So... This other idea went over to Europe, one version of it. And then we were going to do this other thing together, and I thought, dream come true. Worst that happens is they say no. I said, are you up? Here's this thing. It's got a head, but it needs the body. And he wrote back, Let's go, let's start, can't wait. And off we went. It was great when he sent us the, the, the Lulu uh, lyrics uh, for that body of work. So it was something we could sink our teeth into. So I, I could take off my lyricist and singer hat and concentrate on the music part. So we sat together, Lars and I, and listened to the, the, the stuff he had sent that was uh, very potent lyrics with some soundscape behind it for atmosphere. And what would we do? What can we add to this to make it as potent and make it better, take it to another level, make it rock, you know, make it heavy? Uh, so just sat there with an acoustic and kind of just let it take us wherever it needed to go. And uh, it was a blank canvas, and, a, and it's 
it was a great gift because we hadn't really had something like that. You know, we're always starting from scratch, from little tapes here and there. There was there was a body of work already there, and we got to stamp Talica on it. You know. It was a completely different realm for us. Um, Lou is very much in the moment. You know, uh, he uh, ostensibly we came uh, we came together to to rehearse and demo the material. What really happened ended up happening happening is us writing the songs right there and then and recording them just like that, really really quickly without a lot of. of Afterthought, or or uh, going back and just trying to rework things. Lou wanted to record them, and that's it. I mean, a lot of this stuff is just like first take stuff, the master tracks. In Metallica's world, it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't fly like that. It's it's always interesting when you have someone like Lou Reed, you know, actually excited about collaborating with you, you know, in your band. And, and, and again, like Kirk said, he kept saying, let's make an album. After the performance at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame at Madison Square Gardens, again, it was, we got to make an album together. And it's like, okay, really cool. Really? You know? And here we are. One, two, three. me, if you have a title, you're pretty well there. But just having the title, Lulu did not get me anywhere. It's who Lulu was. So that's what it was all about, the psychology of Lulu, the basic plot, who she did what with. It was pretty good. And kind of nice for now, except now you wouldn't think of that as amoral. That would be called par for the course, big deal. But the main thrust of it is like Pandora's box. Lulu, the great femme fatale, and in those days kind of, I suppose, shocking for the bourgeois, which is why it was written, in the sense of um, conceiving her as immoral or amoral. And then I got my paws on it. And I sat with my significant other, Laurie Anderson, trying to make sense out of Bob's incoherent script. And it was absolutely impossible. And I can't, I have a lot of trouble reading anyway. So Wilner, Hal Wilner, my partner who came in with us, he sat down and Laurie sat down and said, okay, this is how it starts. And we know how it ends, Jack the Ripper. If you make others feel like jam, what do you do with Lulu to make Lulu come to life in a sophisticated way using rock? And I mean the hardest power rock you could come up with, which would have to be Metallica. They live on that planet. And I wanted, and we played together. And I knew that. I knew they can do that. We were beyond sight to be um, to be given the opportunity to have a canvas that blank, and to be um, uh, thrown into a situation where there was no specific structure, no A B A B A B C, you know, verse, bridge, chorus, all this type of stuff. Where it was just sort of reinventing the wheel, uh, and and. We've always loved uh, that side of music. We've tried to do our best over the years in certain instrumental pieces we've written and stuff to get as far out there as possible. And, and obviously nothing that we've ever done prepared us for where this went, but we were game from before the word go. And that was, um, uh, you know, that's I think the spirit of this whole thing is that it, it's been a real authentic it's been a real impulsive journey. It's been a, it's been a real, you know, momentary, and, and we're making it up as we go along. We don't really know where it's going. We don't know where it's gonna take us, but it sure as fuck is an exciting ride to be on. There were 
were so many great ideas coming and going, and wow, wow, wow. You know, a, a wonderful, wonderful problem to have. It's too many ideas coming your way, uh, but all agreeing upon that this is magic, these moments are important, don't mess with them. Uh, let's celebrate what's happening here, and there's no way, it, you know, you were bring up the word accident. There's there's no accidents. This was supposed to happen. I absolutely know that. I've been I've had certain ideas for a while and execute them to X point. This though this though took the first of all I thought it was the best thing I ever did. Two I did it with the best guys I could possibly find on the planet. I am a chorus of the voices that gather up the magnets. There were things that we just could not recreate, that, that, that we just kind of bowed to and said, we have to put this on the album. We can't recreate it. If, it, if we tried to take all the magic away, and there were quite a few instances of that, so we, we kind of just went with it, and that's what you hear. With that, it's like um, the idea of Metallica improvising, literally, is, was, was different territory for us. So I, I feel personally that Luz actually made us a better band, more creative in a lot of ways, which will definitely help us in our next kind of, uh, how do you say, uh, our next creative experience as a band in writing new material. I have no morals, I'm thinking me cheap, and someone who just... Not only did it do what it's supposed to, it did more than I would have dared dream of. It pushed me to the best I've ever been by, by having a power team. It was like amazing. I want to see your suicide. I want to see you give it up. 